Could you say that again? Got it. <laughs> the council raised additional seven hundred million dollars, seven hundred thousand dollars for um, Lillian Jones. He got me off guard now. And um, right now, we are working with negotiations with the administration for the CIP, which is FY twenty six, to add an additional seven million into it. The reason why is because it's going to cost fifteen million dollars to give you a new Lillian Jones. We want to make sure that we get halfway there to show that the community that we are committed to this. Um, I found out from looking at old plans that the offer to build a new Lillian Jones was made 27 years ago, and I believe I am now 37, so I was 10 years old when they promised a brand new Lillian Jones. You were born for this. <laughs> I appreciate you, Don. Um, so we just want to make sure they hold cost to that. But in addition to that, there are more investments coming into Santel. Um, we are looking to extend the um, clean core to Santel, to the more broader Santel, but also sustain that funding for it. Because I can tell you two things. The number of 311s in the area have gone down for cleanliness because there's actually people who are looking at it daily trying to clean it up. Uh, right now, we are having negotiations over doing a TIF that would allow us to do a number of renovations to vacant properties in Santel. Um, and in a few weeks, Councilwoman Ramos and I will be introducing legislation. The state gave us authority to do a special tax rate for vacant property. Um, we're going to start off around 15% and see if our colleagues can agree to get us down to 10%. But we're going to try to do 10% of the assessed value of a property. So if your vacant house is worth $30,000, you no longer pay $200 in terms of assessment. You'll actually be paying $3,000 a year in terms of that assessment. We're also going to be trying to add on fees as much as possible, like DC did, to force you to put it to use. I'll give you an idea. Just the rumor and the fact that we're bringing this legislation, I had one person unbrick a vacant house on Cary Street and start renovations right away. And stop them because they, you know, they didn't get any permits. But that is the power of making sure that people pay their fair share. Every time that there's a blighted, a blighted house in the neighborhood, they should be paying for it. Every time that someone is murdered in front of that property and we have to clean it up, they should be paying for it. Because we know with everything possible that blight begets a lot of other things. But also, we're working with making sure that while we're looking at a new Lillian Jones, we're trying to find a permanent temporary space for our young people. Not to be outside, but a temporary space that we can use until we build a new center. Um, we can't do this anymore. We can't continue to fund projects that are in churches or fund programming just because we don't have a physical space. We need the physical space plus that programming money, right? <laughs> We're not going to take away what we already got, but we want to add you something in that physical space to do it as well so that we can put more money into programming for young people. Um, I do know two things, that you will have a renovated pool that will start this summer. Uh, we're working on a claim right now to get the, the playground re-renovated and replaced through um, Wreck and Parks because there's so much damage happened to the playground. Some of it is still under warranty, so we're going to call in that warranty and say come fix it uh, because our young people deserve to slide down the sliding board without thinking about being cut by the board, the sliding board. Um, with that, those are the major updates I have for you right now. In addition to that, we just passed an Office of Returning Citizens. It was personal to me because the majority of the people that return to this district who have a criminal record return to Sandtown. So we're now planning an office that has 50 people in a pilot. They're getting an 18-month release plan. That means 18 months before their feet hit the floor or the streets in Baltimore City. They have employment, they have housing lined up. No longer are we releasing men and women back into Baltimore City with just $50 in a plastic bag and pray that they get ID, right? We're talking about three months of paid rent as well as the security deposit. We're talking about connecting you with BCCC if you need your GED or job placement. We're looking at jobs at DPW, Wrecking Parts. We're giving you employment before you hit because the number one reason well, actually, the two number one reasons why people are violated on parole, an address, and not having employment. Because you can't afford the, the monitoring fees of $50 a month, right? We're now working with a number of portions of it that a number of young men have been violated because they're not making payments for child support. So now, child support is working with us to find them employment, and then if they make steady payments for a year, we're forgiving 20% of their arrears for every year they make steady payments. We're trying to do this restoratively, provide for the child, but make sure that this person has a livelihood and opportunity to be present as a father, but also invest in him and her and their family being reunified. So those are my major updates for y'all.